Then uh, Ryan J. Owens, former USA national team player, agency owner, uh, also pro since 2002 until just about two years ago in Verona, Italy, A1. And we're just going to talk to some of our players here about pro life, uh, why they chose these teams, uh, where they came from, why they chose our agency, advice they have for rookies and others that are looking into our agency and or other agencies. So really this is a education basis and we hope you enjoy it. If you have questions, go ahead and ask them here. Not sure we'll answer them here, but we will answer them in a post later. So Cassidy's going to come in here and we're going Hi. Hey. hey there. What's up? Nothing much. Just uh, an off Sunday for us. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, let's get started so we can give some knowledge. In one sentence or less, how would you describe yourself? Okay. I practiced this. I am an extremely, in or extremely outgoing introvert with passions for um, getting better personally, traveling, learning new things because of the support system that I have around. I know it's nothing like Molina's, but like, <laughs> yeah, it's going to get really, like hyphenated, at least have like a little semicolon there. <laughs> I right. was watching it. I was like, I don't, how do I follow that? <laughs> name, age, and position. My name is Cassidy Pickerel. I am 25 years old and I'm a pin hitter. I play both pins. And where are you from? And I am from Capel, Texas, which is a small suburb close to Dallas, Texas. Nah. Awesome. So list your college and pro teams with their countries and levels, no matter about the years. Okay. Um, I played two years at the University of California at Irvine. Then I transferred to Arizona State University, where I graduated. Then my first season pro was... Uh, I played for Viteos Nuke, and we were a CEV Challenge Cup team. Um, my second season, I played at DPD Legionovia um, out of Legionovo, Poland, and we were not a CEV Cup team. And then I went and played for um, Dudingen in Dudingen, Switzerland, uh, Power Cats. And then this season, my third season, I am playing for Schwarzweiss Erfurt. I'm pretty sure I butchered that because I do every single time. But uh, out of Erfurt, Germany, and we are not a CUV Cup team. Nice. Schwarzweiss Erfurt. There it's, you go. Uh, and Schwarzweiss. So you guys know, it means like black, white, the names Schwarz and Weiss. Cool. Yes. Thank you for going through those. What's your two season vision from now until the end of the next season? Whew, okay. Um, well, this season, I have the goal of us making it to playoffs. Um, we are a completely different team from the team they had last season. We have a new coach and just so many different players with the team now. So I think that we are able or capable and able. It's a new word I made, I guess, um, to do that. So that's my goal is for us to make playoffs. Um, for this season. Next season, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a goal for next season. I know this sounds really bad, but I don't know where I'm going to be after this season. I don't know if I am going to play another season or if I decide, hey, let's play one more season after um, the season is coming to a close or whatever. So I don't really have a second season goal at this point. We'll see later on the later down the road um but for now i'm just focused on making it to playoffs with this team i like it and outside of sport of course you've been working on some things and i always say that you should pursue things on the side especially what you're passionate about things like that because you never know where that road you're gonna have to take a detour and say okay uh, i've i've experienced what i need to experience with this you know and you're mm -hmm. not a rookie you know, you've been playing so and you have already these four teams, right, in a short amount of time. And so it's it's okay to take things step by step. And I'm glad that you were honest about that because you had a plan for sure in the beginning and it was 
to get to these points. And now it's like this new plan. And the plan now is just to focus on right now, make decisions later. So I like that. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Why did you, what'd you say? I said, thank you. <laughs> Why did you two, or, or, or no, wait, wait, wait. Explain the difference between league and Euro Cup matches since you played Euro Cup. Um, so I only had one season with Euro Cup, and that was my very first season in Switzerland. Um, but the difference between Euro Cup and league is league, you play everyone twice. Well, I guess you do in Euro Cup too, but you go to their place and you come and you play once at your place. Um, but in the end, it's points, and that's what takes you to playoffs. Euro Cup, it's like for me, I was in challenge, so there's three tiers for Euro Cup, and we were the third tier. Um, so we're playing like the middle of the pack or top of the pack of other leagues. Um, and so you're seeing competition from other countries and uh, like not the best or not the worst, but like middle of the pack because of where we were in the CV Cup. And it's cool because you get to experience um, different styles of play because of whatever country you're, you're playing in. So like for my team, we played um, a team from France, a team from Spain, and a team from Denmark. And so we got to see the different levels of play. And we, because of that, we made it to the third round since we played so many different teams. But um, yeah, that's the biggest difference just because you're playing uh, teams from other leagues and getting to see the different levels of play. Yeah. And just so you guys know, a little bit of the formula, the formula is like kind of crazy, but in general, they're taking from first down to like third, maybe even fourth or fifth, if they're very strong leagues, these are the kind of teams. So basically like fifth up place teams from different leagues, but the smaller the leagues and things like that, then it's usually only one, two or three teams. So it's actually really good, teams, but in a new season so the team could be completely different than they were that last year but they usually keep around the same level but it doesn't always happen because it's not easy all right um why did you choose your current team and how's it going um a big reason for me choosing my current team is actually my coach shout out to Flo. i don't know if he's watching or not but he is an awesome coach and i got to meet him actually when i went to um an elite volley uh, combine in Serbia back in that was in April and he was there and so I got to experience what he was like off the court and then what he was like on the court and kind of get a feel for who he was as a coach and a person and that was huge for me um, and you like that is super rare when you're playing pro is getting to actually see your coach um, do his thing or her thing before you commit to them Usually you get to talk to them, or not usually, sometimes you get to talk to them um, and kind of get an idea, but then it's like an interview, right? So it's like, are they really like that? Or are they just giving me their best personality right now? So it was cool for me to see him in that state. Um, and he wanted me. And that was huge for me because playing in the Bundesliga is like a dream for a lot of people. Um, it's a really good league, I think, and doesn't. I don't think it to, matters which team playing in the Bundesliga is super cool, um, a lot of fun, and it's a challenge every day, every single game. And those were two big reasons for me to play here. Yeah, thank you. All right, so what's expected from you as a pro by your teams? Um. By my teams, you have to hold yourself in a certain way, obviously, no posting random stuff like drinking or anything like that. You have to hold yourself in a professional manner, um, being on time to things. And when I say on time, it means being early, uh, making sure you're wearing the correct uniform at all times, whether that's practice uniform or game uniform, or if you're doing some sponsor event, uh, making sure that you have everything just like they want you to. Um, because this is your job, you have to be ready for whatever they ask you to do. Um, at the drop of a hat, if it's a last minute sponsor event, you really don't have much else going on. Even if you are taking classes back in America or wherever you're taking them, like this is your job. So this comes first, no matter what. Um, 
and then making sure that you're just taking care of your body, whether that be stretching or flossing or rehab or prehab or eating the right stuff, making sure that you're staying hydrated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, taking the right vitamins, but not anything that's on the prohibited drug list, vitamins, not drugs. Um, so just making sure that you're taking care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever you need, and then holding yourself to uh, a higher standard. Yeah, I love that answer. How is pro different from college? Gosh, pro is different from college in the sense that you're not studying unless you choose to. Um, so your only focus, you're not a student athlete, you are an athlete, you're a professional athlete. So your focus is making sure that your mind, body, spirit, soul, whatever you need is ready for practices, is ready for games, is ready for video sessions, whatever that uh, your club requires of you, you have to be ready for that. And then everything else comes second. And when you're a student athlete, you can't play if you're failing. So you have to focus on your grades as well. So there's that side stress of that. When you're a professional player, it is volleyball, volleyball, volleyball. And then ho uh, hobbies and things you like to do come second, which are also important, but not the main focus. Like you don't need to excel at cooking in order to be a professional volleyball player. <laughs> Okay. Um, can you tell me really quick, what's the best league you played in? Mm. You feel like? Um, hmm. Poland was a really good league. Poland was a really good league. Um, I want to say the name, but I know I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> um, and Bundesliga, this has been a really good league too. It's been really challenging um, all across the board though. I haven't seen like any, even the teams that are at the bottom, I'm like, they're a bottom team, really? So uh, <laughs> I've been fortunate to play in two really good leagues so far. I think the Swiss League is really, really good as well. Um, not up to the caliber of Germany or Poland. Um, but I think it's a really good place for people to start or to go to when they're at the end of their career or somewhere in the middle if they just need a break from pounding away in the big leagues. <laughs> And there's always that for starting or if you can make it to a league like Germany or Poland or Italy or blah, blah, blah. Or yes, you're you're coming down and it's time to just play somewhere that's nice and it's good to play. They're going to take care of you. All right. So what's Elite Volley Fam and why did you choose us? Oh, man. Elite Volley Fam, we are a very selected, very um, small group of people who are a part of the Lee Volley Agency. And we are held, I feel like, to a higher standard in the sense of like an agency expecting more out of you. Because I, I talk to a lot of people who have agents from other agencies and um, they don't do nearly as much as we do in the sense of like preparing your mind, preparing your body, making sure that you're ready physically, mentally, spiritually to go over and play overseas knowing what you need to know before you go for your rookie season what should you pack what should you be eating how should you be training what should you be focusing on if you're in a rut what are some things that you can do to get yourself out of a rut so for me elite volley fam is this network that i rely on when i'm in bad places when i'm in good places when I just need to figure out what's going wrong with my passing or how do I get myself out of a mental block or I'm doing really well. How do I get even better? So Elite Volley Fam for me is more than just an agency. It's like a tight knit group of people. I wouldn't say tight because we're not all always talking, but it's a group of people that. You know, I have power around somebody something <laughs> i'm like we're not like always like hopping on <laughs> like hey man let's talk today <laughs> but we're a group of people that's there for each other and i know when someone's when i'm playing someone from my agency because we are such a smaller group of people whereas i feel like other agencies they're like ah uh, do we have the same agent maybe i think 
and then you talk to them and like, oh yeah, we do have the same agent. For me, it's like, oh, hey, we got the same agent. Let's take a picture. Let's send it to Ryan. Like, so <laughs> it's a Love. it's a small group. That's a really long yeah. answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, why did you choose us when you first were talking? My story is a little different than most. Um, I had a coach, Tanya. Or Tanya, goodness gracious, I can't speak today. Sonia, um, she so was my bitch. assistant. My <laughs> yeah, I'm like Tanya, Sonia. Uh, sorry, Sonia. Um, she was my assistant my senior year, and now she's the head coach for ASU. <laughs> um, and she's doing great over there. But she was like, Cassidy, you need to meet Ryan. You need to meet Ryan. This is going to be a great fit for you. And I trusted her, or I trust her with a lot. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. If Sonia says I should meet Ryan, I should meet Ryan. And um, you and I FaceTimed once, and you were with a family. And we, I was like, hey, Sonia says that I should be with you. And you're like, yeah, a lot of people have told me that I should have you as a kiddo. I should be your agent. And I was like, cool, so are we doing this? And you are like, yeah, we're doing this. And that was it. That was it. So... <laughs> I'm very lucky that I have a lot of people in my life that look out for me and tell me like, hey, this is a good fit for you. You're going to get everything that you need out of this. And um, I trust them with my life and obviously my volleyball career. And it's led me to a great three years so far. So, yeah. I'd like to say just as a disclaimer there that I'm sure that Sonia was like, I really enjoy these things about these people, but here are yeah. our options and here's approach that it's not just like yes. you need to go to this agent so <laughs> just to be clear um, yeah let's throw that in there real quick sorry she did say <laughs> but she was like oh. ryan is probably going to be your best fit <laughs> yeah. okay good i like that i like that i'm really appreciative of that because sonia also had an amazing career you know and mm -hmm. uh i had a podcast episode with her and it's funny that she was thinking about giving up on volleyball when she got injured because she was like i can't get picked up by these pro teams washington wants me went injured thinking like oh yeah i'll just get this free ride and whatever they got her back healthy she won a national championship became a baller that she was destined to be went overseas and had an incredible journey and uh, now she's back there coaching. So yeah, for sure, getting you know references from people like this is it means a lot mm -hmm. to me. Um, okay, what do I expect from? Or no, sorry, let's just wrap this all into one because you're really good with these answers. What? What? Why is your agent important? What do we do for you as an athlete, and expect from you for this to work? Oh man. Okay. Well, the first one. Your agent is really important because there are a lot of things in a contract that, especially as a rookie, you don't think that you need or you don't know that you need. And they are there to protect you, to make sure that you are getting paid on time, to make sure that you're not being taken advantage of. Um, and just to make sure that you're doing okay, like your well-being is good, um, at least in my case. Um elite volley and you expect out of me the best. So whether that's like, if my best in one day is a hundred percent, that's the best that I can give. Or if my best one day is 50%, but that's my hundred percent for that day. That's the best that I can give. And that's what you expect out of me mentally, physically, spiritually. Like I keep saying the whole time, the trifecta. Um, but that comes with preparing yourself and doing the things that you need to do beforehand, not just, going down this dark hole and just letting yourself fall, fall, fall farther and further and further. Um, so th whether that's reaching out to you and getting advice or reaching out to other people within a lead volley agency and getting advice from them, um, you expect us to have open communication all the time and make sure that we are staying on top of our stuff and doing whatever we can to get to a better level, whether that's at the end of the season, whether that's a step every way, whether that's in the off season, whenever it is, just making sure that we are always bettering ourselves in any field, in any sort of level. Yeah. And what, what do I outsource to me so that I take care of? Sorry, we asked that again. 
what do I outs what do I ask you to outsource to me so that I take care of it for you because you shouldn't be doing as an athlete? Anything contractually. So if it's money, especially money, we never discuss money. And I'm very okay with that because money makes me a little nervous, honestly. Um, so we never talk about money. We never talk about stuff within the contract. If we aren't getting things in our contract, we don't talk about it. We send it to you. Say, hey, this is what's going on. Um, we document it. We make Excel sheets if we need to. Um, we keep track of dates. We keep track of money. We keep track of whatever we need to just so that we can have the proof in case something comes up later on. Um, but we never deal with it ourselves. We send it to you and we let you deal with it. And that's that. Thank you. Yes, very important. Athletes should play and do all that stuff. And you should be aware of all of the things that are going on. I'm going to let you know, I keep our athletes very aware of everything that's happening. And that way we can keep this dynamic where you are the player, like teams can respect you as an athlete, and you're not getting into the let me manage you as a manager of this team or blah, blah, blah. So um, how is it to work with me as a player? And how do you use me or things with elites that we offer? It is. You've answered some of this, but you have to summarize. Do I? You've answered some of this already, so you'll have to summarize the things that you answered plus add whatever. Okay. Um, well, having you as my agent is tough love. So if you're not doing things, it is, it is, it's tough love. Like if you're not doing stuff that you should be doing, you're going to let us know. And <laughs> you're going to tell us when it's our fault. You're going to tell us like, hey, you need to get your stuff together. Um, people aren't just going to give you stuff on a silver platter. That's not this business. And that's not how it works. And you have to work for what you want. And you have to be the person that dictates what happens for you. What outside circumstances, things that are out of your control are out of your control. And you let us know when it's out of our control, but you also let us know when it's in our control and what we can be doing in order to better ourselves. I was in a situation one year where I wasn't playing very well, or not playing very well, but I wasn't playing in games, but I was practicing really well and I had video and I made sure that I was doing everything I could before practices to be better physically and mentally. And I was going through some dark times sometimes, but you were. Uh oh, am I still here? Yeah, you Hi. were there, you were saying. Um, so you were there telling me um, what I could be doing, meditating, uh, making sure that I was finding things outside of volleyball and not just putting all of my mental capacity into volleyball so that I had a break from it. And um, you're there for us whenever we need it. So if we're in dark times, like you're somewhat of like a therapist too. So you're not just my agent, you're a friend, you're a therapist, you're whatever we need at the moment. But um, at least for me in the sense... <laughs> Um, but you have always been there for me whenever I am in a dark rut and um, you give us great advice and give us good tips on how to work on things, how to better things on what we should be looking for in certain skills. Um, and I like that a lot. Cool. Um, what do you like? or respect about our agency compared to what you know now uh, through your, you know, the players that you played with, your network outside of that? I'll leave all the agency. I like how close we are. I, he I really don't hear of any other agents um, checking in on their players, how they're doing mentally, how their stats are for the season, what their goals are. I literally never hear that unless they're a part of the volley agency um and maybe i'm just asking the wrong people i don't know if other people actually do this but i've never heard of it unless you're with elite volley and so um i like that you hold us accountable for the goals that we set and you help us develop a plan on how to approach those goals um you give us tips and advice on steps along the way on what we can be doing to help us achieve those goals. Um, you like, like, for instance, you even gave me a question, what are you doing in two years? Well, at the beginning of this, like you helped me 
have a plan for my next two, three, four years down the line. And not necessarily super detailed, but just goals along the way of what I want to be doing instead of just mindlessly coming out here. Okay, I just want to play volleyball. Well, you have to have a reason for that. You have to have a plan. You have to have goals along the way, little goals so that you can achieve the bigger goals. And Elite Volley Agency does that and helps you along the way. They don't just throw you into it and say, hey, do this yourself, figure it out, and then let us know when you're done. It's here's what we want you to do. How can we help you? figure out a plan for what you want to achieve. Okay. All right. Uh, last couple of questions. What are common mistakes you hear rookie pros make with agents or jobs that they choose? Oh rookies. man. <laughs> Say that again. Rookies right out of college. This kind of. Um, biggest mistakes I hear. The biggest one I hear is people firing their agent immediately. Um, just because you just got them and you don't even know like how to get your name out there. You don't have any pro video. I'm um, sure you could have been a stud in college, but that's not the only thing that coaches look at sometimes. So um, find your agent immediately just because you don't think that they're doing something right for you. It's probably not the way to go. <laughs> um, another mistake. Oh gosh that I hear about a lot of people doing is saying no to places because they don't, they aren't going to get as much money as they think they should. And to me, that is like, Ooh, okay. First of all, you haven't really created a name for yourself in the pro world. Um, like I said before, you could have been a stud in college, but it's a different, playing field when you get to professional volleyball like it's a different crowd it's a different ball for crying out loud it's a different setup for games it's you're learning in a new language you're in a new environment you're in an entirely different country for crying out loud so you could show up and completely choke and if you're not making as much money as you think you should well it's because of those reasons there's so many other factors into it whereas we're a little bit more comfortable playing in college because that's where we're from not necessarily from the same state maybe but you're listening to english and your friends are all from the united states unless you've got a couple foreigner players but then they're the ones that are uncomfortable not you when you're eating all the food that you're used to and you can call mom and dad whenever you want because you're on the same time zone and etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. now there's all these other factors and you coming in and trying to discuss more money as a rookie is kind of like a big no-no in my opinion um and then turning down jobs that you think are too far below you or your level i think is a bad idea unless you're getting offers that are way higher than those leagues so it's like you're only getting offers from countries that are lower levels you should seriously look at them but if you're getting like a couple of job offers from lower levels and then you get an italy a2 that's interested maybe maybe you should look at italy a2 that's probably a good idea. But <laughs> if it fits, it fits. But if all you're getting are the lower leagues, you should really consider that. It's not a bad place to start. And you have to keep in mind that you're a rookie. So there's all these other factors. You might not even like it after the first season if, you know, you're not super passionate about volleyball. If you don't know that you're not super passionate about volleyball, your rookie season is figuring out what you like about volleyball how you want to get there, what your goals are, your plan for the next however many seasons you think you want to play, and how you're going to get there. And it's okay to start at a lower level because that usually helps you settle into a better routine when you're in a completely different country. Yeah, yeah I'll add some things to that. So it's like really important uh, to consider a couple of things. If you're getting those lower jobs then you think oh other people are like well i thought you should play in this country or this country or blah 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 there's a concept that you said right there that let's say you're going to get 150,000 euros to play for eight months okay and you have one experienced player who you know what you're going to get from them they have that level and you have one rookie that you are going to risk as a business to pay that money because when they come into that environment they might be confident they may have all this experience, they may have all these awards and whatever, but 
when you, when the shit hits the fan, right? When all of your world has completely changed, those other people who make that money already, who have made that money, who earned that money, will not falter because they understand how to work in that environment and they don't have to worry about, am I gonna have a player who can't get herself out of a funk and who's gonna be mm -hmm. reaching for mm -hmm. and not have a network or whatever? I want them prepackaged, I want them out, jumping out of that box, killing everybody, taking names and no questions asked because the moment I ask them for one loss, what is your problem? And they break down and they're crying. I'm getting a new player. Like, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Who is this? How are you not strong enough to do this? I thought you were, you were playing so well, but that's the pro mentality. It's like, you are pro, you handle yourself. No one handles you, you handle mm -hmm. yourself. So that's really important to recognize. And then the other thing that you said that I want to touch on really quick is that if you're only getting low level job offers, either A, your agent doesn't have better contacts so that's very important to know. Like, is so, dude? Show me, show me who you've been talking to somehow. Prove to me who you've been talking to. Like, I I like to be very transparent. You know that. Um, yes. And the second thing is, if you are getting, uh, if you do have an agent that has those contacts, you know, and you're not getting those deals, you have to start realizing sometimes maybe I fit into something really well. And now that's not what I'm gonna fit into over here because they need different things and I am not that. So how do I work on myself? How do I get myself more complete in these areas where I need to be more complete so that I can have those job offers? Because you don't wanna go there incomplete, then lose it. And now you're half season, no job, or even first few or first month I've seen people get fired. Um, mm -hmm. And now you've gotta rebuild, we talked about before. So thank you for all of that. Uh, last thing I want you to do is just kind of give your last words to people, whatever you want them to hear, and uh, we'll say goodbye. Okay. Um, my last words, man. If you are thinking about playing professional volleyball, just go and do it. Try it for a year, a season, even if it's a half season. Just give it a shot. Um, and it's okay if it's not for you, but at least have that experience so that you can have stories down the line. And if it is for you, then whoop do freaking do you're playing volleyball playing professional volleyball and something that sonia always says to me is the best job i ever had so this is the best job i ever had granted i haven't had many jobs because of you know athletics but um best job i ever had and i'm pretty sure i'm gonna say that for the rest of my life too so give it a shot if you want to yeah and i will add into that there's a couple different or there's a couple different there's many different tiers of players there's many different tiers of levels over here and what's really important is that we are elite volley, right? I'm always looking for those elite athletes. Like I took myself from uh, starting at 17 in high school, JUCOs, D3, NAIA, losing D1 because it's matriculation. That wasn't my fault. Never died. I love you guys, but that wasn't my fault. And national team, getting to national team because they didn't call me. All of these different things because of that resiliency. Because for me, it was just like, I'm all in. I'm doing this. So my thing for elite level players is even if you feel you have that elite level and you keep getting to a level and understanding pretty quickly that you're better than that, that's great. That knowledge is great. Align with somebody who can drive that car with you, help you get there. But don't just think that like in year one or even year two, if you're that type of player, stick through it. Give it two years, I'm telling you as a pro, to really understand if it's good for you. Because if you're an elite level player that you could be playing in places like Poland or Germany, blah, 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 right? Italy, Ger or Turkey, China, whatever, Brazil, stick through it because you will get better. You will grow no matter who you're with. I don't care as long as you never give up. So that was a little bit of me just being me, but sorry. Thank you so much, Cassidy. I appreciate you. It's been such a pleasure to work with you. And I can't wait to see you when I come visit Germany in the second half of the season. Yeah, me too. Big up. Yay. Thanks for having me on. This was fun. I love interviews. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay.